What's up people, Dr. Moses is right here and welcome to Game Gems, episode 17. My god people, it's been such such a freaking long time since we did last one of these episodes. Do apologise for the long long delay and everything for the last, from this episode from the last. But, I've been extremely busy, the coding has been haven, I've had family issues, etc. I, I don't need to explain anything like this. But, the game collection has actually gotten bigger and bigger, and as you guys can see, the background has also changed as well. So, Jesus, a lot, a lot of things have changed. But anyhow, welcome to episode 17. Today's episode is the Nintendo Wii. Now, the Nintendo Wii, as you guys know, it was one of the biggest sales that Nintendo have has ever, ever done. Now, a lot of people have said, though, oh, the Nintendo Wii, it was just a gimmick thing. It didn't do well, and a lot of people liked it. I digress. People loved this console, and every time I go ever go to a shop or go to a retro game shop or anything like that, there's always going to be a little conversation about the Nintendo Wii, and it's always something good about it. It's never really anything bad about it. I've not spoken to anybody that has actually said that they hate the Nintendo Wii. Now, let's go ahead and say out loud, there is a lot, a lot of games out there that are absolutely trash from the Nintendo Wii because they made a lot of them for the novelty part that you could play as a family, which we understand. But however, the Nintendo Wii actually released some massive gems, even to its very, very beginning, to its very final days of a console before it went over to the Nintendo Wii U. But... There was also a company out there that kept on making games for them even after the demise of the Nintendo Wii. Which we have one of them copies with us today. Which will be in this um, five gems of the day. Now, as you guys know, my rules are I try not to pick the ones that are actually connected to the Nintendo. So no Mario, no um, anything that's connected to Mario. Because if I did that, everything would be on Mario. They're all gems. But they're all quite common. I'm trying to pick out the ones that are, number one, that are quite hard to come by, very uncommon, more likely rare, or very limited. And also things that um, I would say it's, 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 it is essential to have in your Nintendo Wii collection if you want to collect it. So, without further ado, let's get down to it. Like I said, it's not like a top five or anything. This is, could be completely random. Let's stop gibbering. Let's start the first one we're to talk about. And this one here is actually the final release game that came out for the Nintendo Wii and it is a collector's item. It is this game right here, if you guys can see. This is Shakedown Hawaii. Now this game is very, very collectible. Um, luckily I picked this up at CX in Lee and I only paid 50 quid for it. Well, less than that because I got a discount off it and everything. But there's only 5,000 copies, if I recall, of this game. 5,000 copies! And I've got one of them. And um, now a lot of people may be thinking this game is trash and all that lot. Um, I don't think it is. I've actually tried it on myself to see what I think about it. And to be honest, it's actually a really, really damn good game. Um, it feels like the old classic arcade games that we all know. And as you guys know, um, Shakedown Hawaii was actually an arcade game back in the old days. But having it actually as a home console game is pretty damn good. I don't, I can't fault it. Yes, some of the controls are a bit, a little bit clunky and everything like that. But Bypassing that, it's actually got a very good story, it's got a killer soundtrack. The controls can be, like I said, a bit, a little bit slimy at one point, but the rest of it, though, is definitely does respond very well. Um, Boss-wise, very good. Difficulty-wise, it can be quite difficult, depending on if you're, if it's your first time playing them type of arcade games. But if it's not, it can be quite a cakewalk. But by, by far, though, people, it's such a great game. And to be honest, having it saying out loud that this is the final game that got leaked on the Nintendo Wii, it's got to go in your collection, people. 100% has to be a gem. So that's that one. So from the very, very last game for the collection for the Nintendo Wii, to one that became extremely desirable and then went down to quite cheap and then it went back up again, then it got a remaster, then it got a remake and now it's on the Nintendo Switch. Xenoblade Chronicles 1, and this is the Collector's Edition. Now, this is why I class this one as a gem, not the Standard Edition. Because this came with a Nintendo Wii Pro Controller, slash Classic Controller, that is red. The same colour as the actual Monado. 
Now, this version is quite collectible. What a lot of people want this collector's edition more than anything. They don't really care about the standard edition because they want the controller. Of course, sure, you can get the controller other ways, like buying it separately on eBay, I think, but I've got it all here, nice and boxed up and collected. I picked this up a long, long time ago. Not brand new. I bought this second hand. I bought this at a old retro game shop that doesn't even exist anymore. But why is it really a gem for me? Like I said, because it's the collector's edition, you can't see them hardly anymore. They're not in great shape anymore if you do find them in the wild. But the Scenery Chronicles itself is a freaking killer game. Killer story. The characters are absolutely amazing. Hell, it got so freaking popular, it went into Smash Brothers. Shulk and the others got into Smash. When you notice that you've gone into Smash, you know you have succeeded and became popular. The combat is very, very straightforward. You can be extremely overpowered right from the very get-go if you really wanted to. It's an open world game, so you can go anywhere you want. Of course, some areas are very, very high levels, so you may struggle and you may die a lot. But some places will tell you on where to go if you want to keep yourself normal standard levels. But if you're not bothered and you want to level up very quickly, Go ahead and go into the higher level areas and start wrecking the experience because that's the game you really want to do it for. And it's one of the games I do remember where you gain friendships with your party. Um, a, lot, a lot of games I've known from the past that actually has done that before, but didn't really succeed very well with it. Or, they're very, or they were quite time consuming or you can miss out parts of it and you can't go back and do it again. With this one, if you do miss something, if you do miss something, you can just go back, do it, and then carry on with the story. You can't lose any progress. You can go back and get that progress and then carry on with the story. With other games, let's say, go out and say out loud, the Persona series, gaining your friendships and everything, when you've gone past a specific date and you ran out of that date, you can't go back. You've lost it for good. You can't do anything about it. Tough luck. Start again. With this one, you don't need to. You just carry on as you normally do. You can do the whole story if you really want to, then go backtrack and do all the side quests, all the friendship quests, one after the other, then go ahead and do the final boss. This is why this game is perfection. There's nothing wrong with it, it's absolutely flawless. Do I prefer this one than the Switch version? 100% yes! I think the Switch version is a little bit more clunky than the Standard Edition. So, if you guys want to play Xenoblade Chronicles, go and play the Nintendo Wii version, not the Switch version. If you have only got the Switch, you can't do anything about it, just go play, go ahead and play the Switch version. Next up, you may be seeing a bit of a thread here, people, because first off, you got yourself an arcade game, then you got an JRPG. This is another JRPG slash RPG, and that is Pandora's Tower. Another collector's edition. Now, you can see where the low pole is coming from right now, people. Collector's editions. I love my collector's editions from the Nintendo Wii because they're quite rare and, and expensive. But this one alone though, Pandora's Tower, oh my god, this game was sick. One hell of a story. It grasped you right from the very get-go, thinking, oh my god, this is going to be an epic story. The characters are memorable. The battle system is spot on. And you may be thinking, what really consists of this collector's edition? Now, a lot of people are thinking, oh, this is just the bog standard collector's edition. This is the only standard collector's edition. This was the only collector's edition you ever got for Pandora's Tower. You get yourself a book. A steel book, which is in immaculate condition, which I've always kept like that. And a black case version of the game. Now, there is ones out there that are white, which are the second print. But you want the original black case version, because they are rare. And I've got the class edition, so it is quite rare. And again, this game could either go up and down every single day. Um, CX, they have it quite priced up quite reasonably. If you guys want to know the prices of these games and you want to buy them yourself, all these games I'm going to show you, you can buy them right away from CX and other websites. But more likely, CX you can do. And if you don't have, and if you have an issue with that um, game, if you do order it online, you can send it back to them within 14 days and then you get your money back. No, 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 um, no worries about that. But back to this game though. Storyline, spot on. Battle, spot on. The graphics for Nintendo Wii game from that days on, oh, it was beautiful. Very well done. The combat was flawless in my eyes. I had nothing wrong with this combat whatsoever. I think the combat was 
very very well done I loved it the com the characters were memorable all I say is people definitely go ahead and play it I can't I don't want to spoil and tell you too much about the story because it's very good if you want me to know tell you a little bit about it I can read you the blur even like this will you still love me so you guys know it's a love story as well a mysterious curse is consuming a young woman only the flesh of beasts dwelling within the 17 towers can save her. So as you, go, as you guys know, it is like a damsel in distress, help her, save her, beat the game. Yeah, you can say it's one of them though. But it is quite thrive of you rescuing her, rescu rescuing her and taking out these beasts. You won't stop until you beat these beasts and go ahead and rescue and save her life. And that's what I love about it, because I do like the them type of games. I can't say anything else about it. It's spot on. Would recommend it. Go ahead and play it. Last one for JRPGs, people. I promise you, people. But this one was so freaking hard to find for so many years, I finally got my copy of it. And it is the limited edition version. The Last Story. Oh my god, this game, I cried so many times in this game because it's such a beautiful story. And by far, people, it's one of the best collector's editions you could ever get in a Nintendo Wii. Steelbook edition, big manual, the game, and of course, you rarely get these in collector's editions on Nintendo Wii. A freaking full-on soundtrack. Are you kidding me? You rarely get them type of things, ever. So, it's something absolutely magical that you get something like that. Now, combat. It's not as good as Pandora's Tower. Nowhere near as good. But the story is 100 times better. The, it's literally one of them ones that is like, the planet is dying and you need to go ahead and rescue the planet. And all that. Of course, it is one of them type of ones, so it's like, if you're a plant... If you're a plant fanatic, you're gonna love this game a lot because it's all about saving the planet from the, the from the evil, which I get very very well. But it's just the build, the build of the characters was so freaking so freaking flawless. You couldn't even predict on how flipping good this game could be, and. I just really cannot put my finger on it on how freaking good this game is. I have to make a whole entire video about this game and I don't really want to do that because number one, I'm too fucking busy and number three, I want you guys to be have your own opinion on that game and you guys can play it. Whether you want to buy it physically for a very expensive price or play as an emulator and get it quite cheap. But I would, if you guys are Nintendo Wii fanatics and you want to be a collector, get yourself a copy. More likely, the limited edition copy of the last story. Now that takes us to the final item for the Nintendo Wii that should be 100% a gem. And just to let you guys know, it's not even a game. It's an accessory, but it's very much so for your games. If you guys want to collect Nintendo Wii games, you gotta get this. This is the freeloader for the Nintendo Wii. This is a disc that can convert your Nintendo Wii to American, European, or Japanese. Yep. This one little tiny disc could turn your American, your Japanese, or your European game console to another country. And not a lot of these got printed. And these are hard to come by. They're quite expensive. They're around about 25 to 35 pound each, if you can find them. In CX, you can buy them, so try and find them if you can, people. <laughs> Pretty much, I bought mine from um, Flash, um, from Soul from Metro Games in York, and I was quite fortunate they actually had one in stock. But all I can say is, though, people, if you guys live in Europe, get this version. In other countries, there is other versions that you want to go after, but that one you want to go for the most. I mainly use this religiously every single week when I want to go ahead and jump on my Nintendo Wii so I can play my Japanese games and my American games. I have more Japanese games there is than American, but I go ahead and put this in, install it, put myself my Japanese copy of um, um, Mask of Lunar Eclipse on the Nintendo Wii, and have a hell of a time. So, 
That is why I think this game is, this is 100% a game gem because it is needed if you do not want to spend hundreds of hundreds of dollars or hundreds of pounds to go ahead and convert your Nintendo Wii into a region free unlocked Nintendo Wii, which does take a lot of time. With this, it only takes five minutes and the other one takes you at least an hour. I digress, that's the thing to do for. Anyhow people, that is the episode today for the Nintendo Wii. I've gone ahead and talked about the final game that ever got released, uh, Shakedown Hawaii, Cinebreak Chronicles, Pandora's Tower, The Last Story and of course, The Freeloader. Now a lot of people may be saying that's just four games on one accessory, you should do it, go ahead and say one more thing. If you really want me to say something out loud, it will be probably in the next load of episodes for next year. Because this November I'm just doing nothing but Game Gems episodes. So there's no lip syncing videos, there's no music videos. They're going to get yourself prepared for December. So get yourself prepared for that. Anyhow people, hope you guys enjoyed it. I surely did. Make sure you leave a like. Subscribe if you're new to the channel. I hope to guys see you guys in the next episode for Game Gems. What could it be? We do not know. We'll decide very soon. The people obviously go see you guys subscribing. And I'll see you guys next time. Cheerio!